Good morning. Um, uh, I'm a sociologist uh, from Trieste. I work in SWG, which is a research institute, little advertisement, <laughs> that uh, works on public opinion, behavior, and uh, emotion of the Italian population on a quite wide range of topics. We work on uh, politics a lot, but also on uh, daily life, uh, market, etc. And we adopt a, a wide range of uh, techniques to inquire opinion. Today I will focus just on the quantitative approach, uh, the one that aims to give um, also a proportion of how opinion is distributed in a population. Okay. I will take a little digression on what actually quantitative uh, opinion research uh, is, uh, um, because opinion and emotions are quite uh, fluid and elusive objects. So, um, to make a opinion research, we need to do some uh, few but risky operations. The first is to create a code that have a meaningful uh, and exhaustive uh, range of categories. Um, and then we must fit the opinion of the people in these categories. Okay? Then we count how many people are represented by each category. So the operations are few. Sampling is dif difficult. Coding is risky. Counting is the easy thing. We can do much more complicated statistical uh, things, but the basics are this, are coding and counting, okay? Um, in 35 years, especially since the 90s, uh, the Institute struggled with several information and communication uh, revolutions on opinions research. In a few words, uh, before everybody had a home phone, and so it was easy to make a sample for, uh, which was representative of Italy just from telephone directories and then choose if to interview people face to face or on telephone. Then people start to use mobile and it was okay, but then they started to abandon the home phones. In the meantime, they started to use internet. So um, we developed an access panel where people could uh, join our surveys through um, email. They were invited by email. We have around 60,000 uh, members in our panel. And now when social network site uh, spread, we had our uh, way to access the panel through such a few social media, Facebook, Twitter, and now Google Plus and LinkedIn. Um, then people, of course, started and Almost everybody started to use mobile, so now you can join our survey also through mobile. The, uh, what is the, um, the main advantage of this uh, approach is that we can um, use different instruments in the same survey and keeping the sample under control because everything is uh, managed from the same platform. Um, but uh, it can look very fluent, but uh, it, there are many uh, matters to keep in mind uh, when you do such researches. For example, different segment represented on telephone web. Yes, population owning a home phone is different from population online, or better, every um, population is represented uh, differently in significant more different segments of population. Let's consider age, but not only. Yesterday we saw the regional differences, for example. And let's add that the changes in this proportion are very fast. In the beginning, uh, internet was for educated and rich people. Now, almost everybody can go online. Also, if the type of use could be different. In addition, my email users' population is different from social network site users, and every social network site attracts different segments. Anyway, this difference can be tried to be balanced through uh, statistically ponderating data. But you, what you can't overtake is that the people that join a survey panel are more informed and active than uh, normal population. The second range of matter is that the tools are not neutral. Somebody stated that the media is the message. It could be too deterministic, but what is undoubtable is that everybody uh, communicate, um, every Every communication channel have a specific rules and habits, so people adapt communication to the if they interact live, if they are on Facebook, if they are on the phone, and this matter is connected to another one that people act diversely according to the situation, at home in group with colleagues, with friends, if the interaction is anonymous or not anonymous, and last but not least, the <laughs> codes are not neutral. Verbal language is our common ground, but uh, we use many different codes. We use text, speech, visual, and 
even more e e hybrid language, and often we use code chains. We think something, then we try to describe it, then we try to type it on our keyboard, and uh, the computer translates it in 0101, and then the who read it uh, understand on the basis of its knowledge, sensitivity, and try to uh, answer on the basis of its temporary interest and of the moment. An example, he can answer with a smiley, with an emoticon. And what is an emoticon? Is it text or visual language? The answer is not so uh, easy to give. Uh, at every code switch, the message is changing, at least a little bit. And today we have a bigger range of codes to use. We can use uh, words, picture, vocal message, video clip, video mishaps, GIFs, etc. Anyway, uh, this uh, topic could lead us in a philosophical route that I won't take because we have just 10 more minutes. Uh, so these matters cross each other and must be taken in account when we uh, code opinion of people, okay? But since a few years, uh, while struggling with these uh, technical and philosophical <laughs> dilemmas, we broke into another world which was a very concrete one. And we started to observe that web giants, but also little startuppers, start to make amazing things. They started to predict plugs, flight prices, commercial trends, and many uh, other great works, creating amazing and sometimes scary services for private and public advantage. We broke into the big data wall. But if we, fo if we focus just on public opinion, which role are big data playing? How big data look like comparing to traditional survey data? There are many more. They are scattered around the net, and they are not homogeneous between each other. And why this? Because they are not created to fit into an opinion survey or for any other data analysis. They are digital traces that we live online, minding our business, that are used by big data scientists to make their business. Okay. So let's think about this. If I answer to a telephone survey, my goal is to express my point of view directly through the code needed by the researcher to create his data. For example, if I'm asked about my opinion on the constitutional reform, which is really a hot topic in this month in Italy, I will hear, are you in favor or against, or you still don't know? I will pronunciate or click one of the three options. It's easy, and often this is forced, but it makes our job really quick and much more simple. Let's take a big data analysis that aims to observe sentiment on the net about the same topic. Who shares his or her own opinion, for example, on Facebook, does it not to answer an opinion research and rarely shares comments like in favor, against, I don't know. It's more probable, especially in Italy, to find long text units like this, for example. To be used in a web sentiment analysis, this text must be meaningfully decoded and recoded before any other operation. We would need to hire a thousand a researcher, and that is a nice thing, and ask them to read millions of such contents, and this is not so nice. They have to decode text created for other purposes, to express an opinion, to convince other people, to participate, to look involved, intelligent or sexy, and turn it into a simple code in favor, against, or still don't know. Okay? What is amazing is that big data analysts can do so in an almost automatic process. Today, there are many companies that use big data to monitor, but also to forecast the net sentiment on any topic. What do they do exactly? In brief, each of them developed one or more algorithms that can analyze and code a huge number of text units from the web, giving a proportion of the net sentiment on specific topics. So, also if the perspective is very different from survey, the task is the same, coding and counting. The variety of big data techniques uh, an algorithm is huge. I will focus just on an example coming from our experience. Uh, yeah. To face with the challenges, uh, SWG acquired a significant proportion of voices from the blog, a big data startup from Bicocca University in Milan. So now we often combine opinion survey and web big data sentiment analysis. Voices develop a large range of business intelligence services based on big data analytics. One of these is the observation of the sentiment on, in the network publics, like Facebook, Twitter, and other social network sites, blog, and forum. I use the expression network public to underline that we are talking just about the public side of the net. For example, a WhatsApp chat is out of our reach, for example. Anyway, the main advantage of the analysis conducted by the ISA algorithm created by the founders is coding the online sentiment on a 
uh, any network public, but on any topic. And what is amazing in any language. How is it possible? The reason is that the algorithm can learn from the research group. For example, voices conducted a research for The Guardian two years ago, I think, aiming to assert the online sentiment toward the Daesh, toward ISIS, in Arabic language, in many Western and uh, Middle Eastern countries. For voices, uh, sentiment analysis, uh, these are the steps. Choose a topic, in this case it's ISIS. Choose a sentiment code. You can do positive or negative, but you can choose something broader like uh, enthusiastic, fear, uh, joy, etc. We will use now a simple one. And then uh, you, have, you can choose the country of origin and the time lapse of the text unit. For example, uh, for example, Gen uh, Belgium and Germany in spring 2013. Then uh, you ask I the algorithm to extract the software to extract certain amount of uh, text units from that uh, uh, mass of uh, social media um, contents. And then asking a pair of Arabian speaking person, better if they're mother tongue, to code the first 20, 50, 100, I don't know, uh, text units. Depends from the kind of analysis. And now IZA is ready to code automatically the remaining thousand of text units. And then counting, but as we said, counting is not a problem. So, this is the result. The map on the left shows the, uh, the percentage of a positive comment toward Daesh on the net of every considered nation. Interesting was later to observe that there was a sample of a text from every considered nation. Interesting was to later to observe that the highest this percentage was, the major was the contribution of the country in terms of foreign fighters that joined Daesh in Syria and Iraq. The, this case is interesting because of two reasons. Uh, an advantage, advantage of big data analytics on social network stream is that they are geolocalized, localized that allow us to draw a map like this based on the nation of origin of the post and the tweets. On the other hand, it's a lucky example Lucky, does Ash is very present online and uses network publics to hook potential foreign fighters. This generated discontinuity between opinion online and behavior offline. But in many other cases, network publics are totally different world from the offline reality, okay? Different way of communicating and different population, as we said before. For example, half Italy as well as half USA is on Facebook. But just 10% of Italian uses Twitter against the 20% of Americans. That means that uh, today just an elite is tweeting in Italy, politicians, journalists, and other communication professionals. And as we said, every social network interests specific population segments. So combining the analysis of many different uh, sites helps a lot, but doesn't solve this matter. Because as we said uh, before, said 7 million Italian are still offline. Uh, well. <laughs> Three more minutes to show three short examples of combination of survey and big data sentiment analytics. This data uh, was uh, showed the sentiment toward the civil unions, the law that gave possibility to legally unite in Italy also to monogender couples, observed on the week before the law was approved in Italy. It shows how sometimes surveys and big data analytics give similar results. On the left you can see the result of a survey on 1,000 Italian citizens on the right, the analysis of 27,000 text units in the Italian network publics. This data show instead how often the results brought by the two techniques are very different. In this case, Paul's reliability lies on the time series that we collect since the 90s, a constant increase in favor towards legalization, especially from the economic breakdown on. This is the chart of the evolution of this. But why network publics show such a different? On one side, network publics are often more sensitive about civil rights, but on the other side, legalization active, activists and associations are very live online. But what happened, for example, in this case was that the observation was made on the same week that uh, Roberto Saviano posted his viral video on legalization, pushing especially on the topics of fighting mafia and increasing national income. We estimated that the great rumor the video generated made the favor jump higher than 10%, to reassess around 70% in the following weeks. One more. 
One more example. This data on the sentiment toward welcome policies for immigrants show instead how not always the net is a pioneer of human rights. This growing intolerance toward migrants spread in Italy in the last five years had a great gain online. But this example shows also that the two techniques have different advantages. In this case, the survey was useful to detect the policies preferred by the population, segmented by, for example, by the electoral base. Uh, on the other side, the uh, data analysis was useful to detect the online trend topics uh, connected to the matter of migration. So the application of both techniques to the same topic led to different but complementary results. Uh, yeah, the last example showed that often uh, the ju judgment on necro republics are more drastic, very good or very bad. In the survey on the left, for almost half of the sample, the rescue services after a matrice earthquake were just good. In network public, they were very good or very bad. Okay, let's take some conclusion. I will leave this synthesis tab on the background. So today we talk about a large range of quantitative public observation techniques. We have face-to-face, -face, telephone, online, mobile, interviews, and big data sentiment analysis. We briefly listed the advantage and limits of uh, some of them. So if the question is which is the best technique to observe public opinion, uh, in my opinion, this question is wrong. Because uh, there is no answer today, I don't think there will be an answer tomorrow. To make a good research, uh, what you have to do is uh, to, first of all, decide what we want to know. If we want to observe uh, the test a politician for a campaign, if we want to, uh, for example, see how uh, fooding uh, change uh, in habits in the, after the economic breakdown, or I don't know, any question have a specific project to build. Second, we have to learn who are the person that can answer our answer and, and how to reach them. Third, we must know how much money and how much time we have. This is dramatically conditioned in research choices. So now we are ready to build a research customized on our objective. And uh, I mean, creativity and experience are very important also in quantitative uh, works. Okay. So now the broad, the, to conclude the broader range of uh, tools we learn to use, uh, the best we will find uh, the right path to our answers. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you very much. And uh, anybody has any questions or wants to? Yeah, let me. Okay, you hold on to that. Hello, thank you for your presentation. Hello. When you were presenting, I was thinking about <clears throat> an example of interesting use of polls as it is done in the US. Uh, let's consider, for example, the blog 538. 538, is it so? By Nate Silver, uh, who makes prediction of the uh, United States uh, election. There, it is seen the use of combined polls or combined tools together to see if they converge or not. And the use of a series of several years of polls. My question is if there is something to come to tell about combination of tools, you have presented also tools other than the typical polls here in Italy or in our zone. Thank you. Uh, in our experience, for example, for uh, um, election uh, prediction, which is the only forecast we try to do in our uh, SWG, we mix uh, telephone and uh, web uh, sample. Uh, in the, um, in different uh, proportion from based on the um, electoral uh, units of Vital. And uh, the fact is that, yes, election uh, forecast is uh, stat statistical uh, error is going up and down 3%. That in a opinion poll is uh, quite precise. But in politics, of course, this is uh, the range uh, is very important. So sometimes we get it, sometimes we almost get it. <laughs> And uh, this is the mo most used the combination uh, at the moment. Non big data at the moment uh, in Italy uh, are not used to forecast opinion or uh, 
um, votes. They are still uh, uh, um, perfectioning their algorithms, but uh, on the other side, the, the, um, the audience of this uh, sentiment analysis is still the, uh, is the net. So uh, it's difficult to and then uh, to forecast the, something offline from the net uh, opinion. But, okay. <laughs>